Hey guys and welcome to Feywood. So this is the next part of the necklace. Um, in this first section I'm going to show you how I use gold leaf. Um, I'm making some additional planets for the observatory. Um, I did use, as you saw in earlier videos, these cabochons here that uh, represent parts of the ob observatory. But basically what I'm wanting to do is have some be completely three-dimensional and floating above the ne necklace in beadwork. So what I'm using is some black polymer clay and I'm going to be rolling that up. Um, you do need to really work at the polymer clay to warm it up and to make it pliable. And that can take a bit of uh, work. It's quite stiff when you first use it. Now I want the planets to be different sizes so I rolled it out into a tube and as you saw I cut it with the scissors into different size bits and then I'm rolling them and placing them on the necklace to get an idea of what size I want and a approximate placement for each of the planets. Now I started with a black polymer clay because I didn't have the colour I was after which was more of a brassy or coppery tone um, to really hide any gaps where I put the leaf on top. But what I do have is this copper um, mica powder and you can just basically roll this in the mica powder and it adheres to the polymer clay. So I then just use my fingers to really smooth it out over the um, whole bit of polymer clay there. And once I'm done, I wanted to make holes in it because I'm going to be using wire work. Um, so I really want these to be beads. And you just use a skewer and you, or a toothpick is fine as well, um, or anything else sharp like this. And you carefully sort of twist it with your fingers. So you see how I'm holding it in my fingers and twisting back and forth so that it slowly, slowly moves through the circle without changing it, um, you know, squishing the circle and any of that while you're pushing it through. You really want to keep that shape because if you just were to push it straight through um, and you weren't really slow and careful about it, then it would just smush the ball um, and it wouldn't be so elliptical anymore. Now, while I baked them, I baked them on this skewer and I had it on a pie tin. I didn't film that part, but um, I just made sure that they weren't sitting flat on the um, tray so that they, you know, became again squished maybe while they were being um, baked in the oven. Now here I'm putting on gold size. So I held that up to the screen for you to have a look. Um, it's like a tacky almost a glue or a you know um, coating that you use basically and you paint this on the area that you want to use gold leaf on you wait about 10 minutes or so and it becomes tacky um, I just stay nearby and, and check it once it's sort of not milky anymore it's usually about right you don't want to leave it too long because then it will just dry so I have this lovely gold leaf that has all of this variegation in it and I purposely chose this leaf for this project because of the variegations. Um, if you have a look at the um, observatory in the movie, there are a lot of blues and reds and these beautiful colours um, through the metal of the planets and things. So I really wanted to mirror that in what I was doing as well. And I think it looks beautiful. So what I do, once I've got the gold size tacky and I'm put, I put little sections of this foil on top, um, of the leaf on top, and you use a dry brush. So don't use the same brush that you used for the gold size because you'll have a nightmare of a time. Um, use an absolutely dry brush and press, um, you know, basically use that to flatten out the leaf on the um, object that you're using the leaf on. So you just sort of brush it over to coax it 
flat and you keep going and buffing it in so that it's nice and smooth and flat and then I've just got this clear lacquer that I put on the top. Any clear lacquer is fine. Um, I would probably stick with one that you can paint on just so that you don't make a mess and everything and that's just going to make sure that um, it's you know nice and secure and the leaf isn't going to come off or any of that. So what I'm doing here is just using a really thick needle to pierce a hole in between some of the beads. Now be very careful when you do this that you're not um, breaking any of the thread because you might have a big accident and beads will go everywhere but um, I just pierce that hole so that I can then push the wire into the beadwork. Now I do this quite often with my work and this is I don't think anyone else really does a technique like this so I can't really point you to anyone else's work but I've used this technique in a lot of my work where I will do wire work on top of embroidery work. Now this is not for the faint of heart, I don't recommend this if you are new to embroidery work. Um, if you are quite advanced and you feel quite confident with your beadwork then by all means give this a go. It's lots of fun and you can do some really interesting things. Um, now what I do is I anchor the wire, um, I twist it around once I stick it through the um, lacy stiff stuff. I make sure there's enough, um, maybe an inch or so that I've got that it can go underneath the lacy stiff stuff that I can then bend around and you'll see me do it here in a moment. So you can either use pliers or I've just used my fingers in this case because it's quite a soft, soft enough wire for me to do that. And I just make a little loop and the reason I do that is it gives me something to then sew this into the um, backing and it also means that it's not going to pierce anything if it does move or anything. Um, it's not going to pierce the ultra suede that I'll be ultimately putting on the back of this. So then I make sure it's sewn on nice and tightly. It will be also eventually glued because I'll be putting the backing on and I'm quite generous with my glue at that point. But before you do any wire weaving, um, which I will be showing you in this video a little bit of that as well, you want both ends of your wire to be in place. So I've used a um, 18 gauge and you'd want a nice structural wire such as, I wouldn't go any um, thinner than a 20 gauge personally. I would go anywhere from 16 to 20 gauge possibly. Um, generally I prefer either 16 or 18. It's a bit more structural. Um, I tend to go for half hard wire because I find it easier to manipulate. Um, and I ended up using a non-coated brass wire because I just thought I may end up wanting to try and tarnish it a little bit. Um, maybe with painting on some liver of sulphur which will give it an antiqued finish. Um, and that's just because of like, I feel like this is such an old worldy looking piece that the bright brass might be a bit too much. Uh, I may just that, um, decide not to even do that and let it naturally, you know, age or tarnish or whatever. But we'll see how I feel at the end of it, I guess. But if you don't want to do that, um, just use a coated wire and it's honestly a lot easier to find coated wire than non-coated wire. I had to look around to get the non-coated in brass because non-coated silver is a lot easier. Um, and if you guys are, you know, needing a source of wire, let me know and I'll try and look up where I got this wire. It was a while ago that I bought it now, to be honest. I got a fair bit, so it's lasted me a really long time. So now you can see I'm starting to use um, a thinner, now this is a 28 gauge brass wire to wrap around my two pieces of wire. So I've just stuck with two bits of wire that I've, as you see, I've fed those through the circular planet there. And 
I didn't want to, I could have potentially put a third bit of wire in there if I wanted to, but um, I didn't want to cover up the beadwork too much. I wanted this to be quite slimline. I wanted to think about where I want the planet in relation to the other planets. So I sort of had it swirling around and falling down next to one of the other cabochons. Um, and this 18 gauge wire, I again feed up from um, underneath the lacy stiff stuff. I like to use a lot of wire for this um, so I don't have to, hopefully don't have to rejoin another bit of wire into the wire work. So, um, but if you're finding it too difficult to work with a really long piece of wire, because it can be quite tricky to use, use a, a big long bit of wire um, then you know maybe try a smaller piece and basically I just wrap once around the wire itself and then around and underneath the other the second piece of wire um, as you can see it and then wrap around that same bit of wire um, again so that it stays nice and secure so you know you wrap just around one piece of wire like you know um, like a coil you know once or twice you at least once want to wrap um, a couple of times you know usually on around in a coil around the piece of wire as an anchorage and before you go to that next piece of wire and then I alternate you know um, back and forth between the two, just um, over and under, over and under, to give a nice pattern in the end. And it's really important to pull very taut on the wire as you're doing each wrap, um, because you won't be able to go back and uh, tighten it up again. So each wrap, just really pull it tight. Um, the other thing you need to be careful with uh, with wire work is not to kink the wire too much. Um, you can get away with some kinking with this 28 gauge because you will be wrapping it quite tightly once you actually use, you know, use that bit of wire I suppose. Um, so if there ends up being a tiny kink, by the time you pull that bit of wire nice and taut, you probably won't see the kink but really do try not to let it kink. And you might just need to coax it with your fingers gently through certain areas so that it doesn't kink, you know. Um, like this part here where I'm going through the bead. So I've, I've done all the wire work all the way up that one side and then I uh, thread the uh, 28 gauge wire through the bead so that I can continue wrapping on the other side of the bead. And it's the same thing. So I wrap a um, couple of times around one piece of wire, then uh, over and under, and wrap a couple of times on the other bit of wire, uh, over and under, a couple of times. Now, if the wire is curved like this, sometimes you have to wrap more on one side than the other. So on the outer curve, you'll need more wraps around that piece of wire, more coiling wraps before you cross over to the other piece. And on the inner curve, obviously less. Um, the amount that you do that is really gonna depend on how tight the curve is. If it's a very um, tight curve and the outer wire is a lot larger than the inner wire, then you might, might need to substitute quite an, a number of additional wraps around that piece of wire so that your curve is nice and neat. So you may end up doing five or six uh, wraps around the one bit of wire before crossing back over to the inner wire again, you know, with your over and under wrap. I hope this is all making sense. Um, it's a difficult one to explain, but hopefully you're seeing what I'm doing here as well. So I, Keep going with that same sort of pattern. You can see it's um, nice and tight beadwork uh, of wrapping. Sorry, there. It's. I did try this originally with a 
26 gauge and I didn't show it in this video but I ended up cutting that off because I just wasn't getting a nice neat wrap on that one. Um, it is possible to do but I did find it, I didn't like how it was looking so I ended up switching out to the 28 gauge and I really like the 28 gauge for wrapping like this um, probably the most but you can definitely um, do all sorts of different things with wire work and it's just a matter of trial and error really and um, you know there's all different techniques and different wrapping um, patterns that you can do. I wanted this very simple as I said because I just don't want to cover the wire work up too much but I do want some floating planets up here. Um, now I do find sometimes doing the wire work over a full collar that's not a segmented collar it can be a bit of an issue with the curve around the neck um, because the wire might change the way it drapes around the neck. I'm hoping that's not an issue for this one but I'll be honest I haven't I would normally do the um, straps sort of around the neck separate to the front of the necklace if I was doing wire work like this and I decided not to for this one so it is a bit of an experiment um, good thing it's my necklace and nobody else's um, but we'll see how that goes and I'll keep you guys up to date with how I find that goes now I wrapped this 28 gauge as you can see around those structural wires um, at the back just to make sure it's in place and then snip off any excess and again I'm just sewing these um, other pieces down making sure they're nice and secure um, you could do this before you started doing the wrapping in fact I probably should have in all reality but I just wasn't sure if they might move a bit um, or I might want to sort of maneuver them a little while I was wrapping so I hope you enjoyed this next video and um, give this a try yourselves. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're wanting to keep up to date with all my uh, creative bits and pieces. And I'll see the rest of you in Feywood next time. Bye guys.